All right, now everything seems to be working. Sorry about that. Uh, I think it's looks like it's working good now. Hey, little Annie. Our uh, most ardent supporter. Back. Okay, let's see. Let's see what's happening. Let's see. Um, yeah. So yesterday we ended up here. We had the Docker file ready, but we were switching out the uh, request thing. We were switching it out for uh, so instead of using network.http, we were gonna use something called rec. But then. So I was building it when I edited last time, but then it failed because it can't build Clib, which is pretty classic. Uh, Clib is like it's like a requirement for so many libraries in Haskell for like it doesn't get uh, installed by Haskell itself. So we're gonna have to fix that, and I'm hoping that we can just do apk add add Clib here. And here we're gonna add Clib. And I'm hoping that this actually just does it. New password. And let's see what happens. Okay, so we got Clib. That just worked. I think. It executed the line at least. Now it's updating the ball. How's everyone doing? I think we'll manage to do this today. So last time, you know, we, we kind of implemented a little poop. But you know, the thing is we have to start dealing with headers now. So we want to uh, like reply to something. We need the uh, request ID header because we need to tell AWS like what requests we we're playing to. So yeah, we'll have to see. But uh, see, so this this is gonna be cached, by the way. So like we won't have to deal with. Thanks for the follow, MJ. Uh, I always appreciate it. So, it's gonna be cached, so next time we run it, uh, we won't have to do this all over again. But, it's just like, downloading this package list, that's, that takes a lot of time. Uh, for some reason... Um, I don't know why it takes such a long time. Though. Shouldn't really be doing... Maybe my internet is not great. That was the, like the issue I had. It said that it couldn't connect to the server. Uh, it got fixed in OBS when I, I, uh, what I did was I just re-authenticated Twitch, and it seems to have worked out. But uh, we'll see. See what happens. Okay, now we're building again, and we've added Clib. I'm hoping it all works out. Let's see. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah. I still have my Monster Cat Gold license, which means I'm legally allowed to play this music. Which is good. We don't want to get in legal trouble, right? That would be a lot of hassle. Ugh, this wreck. Like, why does wreck need blaze? Like, HTML builder? Like, why? Why, yeah. Uh... Yeah, yeah, the Docker worked out. Uh, we're not really dealing with Docker now. What we're working with now is that we, uh... We need, uh, we need Clib 
for this library we're installing. So it's because like so yeah, I added a new dependency. The uh, the uh, this rec library here to do like web. Uh, no, sed sedlib z zlib. Uh, and we need um, so, so we need to install that. Set that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Z Z. I don't know which which one you prefer. Uh, so we need that for rec. And you know, because we if we're gonna be doing a lot of requests. Like the entire uh, Lambda API thing works with requests the whole time, right? So we just want to make sure that's easy. You know, we were using like network.http last time yesterday. And that worked out, you know, it wasn't too hard. But, uh, you know, I don't know. If, if, like if our main functionality is to be doing requests we want like a library that's good with requests right we want to be able to do that easily uh, so this is also going to be cached that was the nice part you see we did that here uh so we so we kind of we add the dependencies uh, like the cabal file which defines the dependencies and then we build only the dependencies and then we add like the code for the package right so now we won't have to rebuild the entire container every single time very good yeah sorry for being late i was uh, i was actually out for a drive uh, and then you know, when I got back, I thought everything would work, but then, you know, OBS wasn't working and I had to set stuff up, so... Uh, I hope it's okay. I hope no one sat down at 6 o'clock and being like... I'm never gonna watch this again, he was... He was late. Yeah, I know. It's not okay, you know? like your regularly scheduled pro like you know this is non-linear this is linear content you know it's like a yeah it's a yeah it's live streaming right you gotta watch it live and then what happens if you don't go live it's just like the only people stop watching live programming right and now but async stream it'll be fun i just like youtube right you can just uh see this my gangsta playlist we talked about it yesterday i'm not allowed to play it uh it would be illegal but we can play the synth wave today this is a bit too hard i think this is more easy more easy listening. See? Starting sit lip, sad lip. Let's see if it fails. So gangsta, it's illegal. Yeah, I mean, what I would do is that they would just take my channel off the air. They would shut us down. That would be bad, right? God damn it. Ugh. Oh my god. Okay. That didn't work. Uh, but we have sublib here. We do uh, Alpine. Uh, probably this one, right? Sedlib Dave. Some people pronounce Dev as Dave. I didn't know that. Let's just compile it this way and see if it 
See what works. Click a wall and on Settle Dave. That worked. Now I wanna I wanna see. Now we gotta do the ball update again. This is what live programming is all about, you know? It's gonna take time to do things. We can't just have all the libraries ready and get going. No, that doesn't work. Okay, if this, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And like, like, so this is gonna cache it, but what it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, a couple update here, and then I'll I'll remove this line here, line fourteen. But that's gonna be okay. It's gonna be, it's after the long cabal update, so you know, we'll see if this works. Um, I think it will. Confident. So what's everyone up to? Everyone enjoying the weather. We've been having pretty good weather here in the sense that, well, it's been super cold, but it's been very nice, uh, like lighting. So I've been out taking pictures. And on my camera, it's been great because, you know, I can take pictures of Oh my god. Okay, let's just see if it just does the whole thing. At this point, I don't even care. We won't do the Cabal update again. We'll be fine. Not much. Just did work. Then staring at my screen. Alright. That's what I do too, you know? It work. And I'm so glad to be rid of the big screen. I go look at my smaller screen. And then I start streaming on the big screen again. Uh, screen time wise, um, this is not a good hobby, but you know, it works. Why are you mad? Oof. Yeah, I think I've, I, I have had a productive meeting, but you know, it, it takes effort. Like, but like, if everyone shows up super prepared, you can actually have a productive meeting. But, you know, most people don't show up prepared, and then you don't have a good meeting. And then people are like, well, no one else was prepared, so I won't show up prepared either. Uh, because, like, everyone has to be prepared. If, if there's only, like, even one person that has to be filled in the whole time, kind of ruins the entire meeting. That's my, my take. But how do I know? All my meetings are on Zoom these days. And they are uh, different. I think they're more, I, so they're more productive in the sense that, you know, there's less joking around, right? Because, you know, the mood is different. So people like, but like you have to like make people come in and like, hey, focus. Focus on what we're doing. What are we trying to do here, right? I don't know. Okay, now we're up to entropy. Come on. We won. So I, I installed Seedlib. Seedlib 1G Seedlib Dave. Or Seedlib Dave. I think this will work today. This time. This time around. Now we're gonna go here to AWS Lambda. Let's say... Oh yeah, <laughs> those are the best meetings where you're just you're just defining another meeting, and you're like, could that have been a an email? Well, maybe. I wonder how Zoom meetings will fit into the future. You know, will people be like, if yeah, let's rather have a Zoom meeting than than a uh, actual meeting, you know, this is a quick Zoom meeting we can do. 
I think it will be nice, right? But, you know, it's been possible for a while, but no one's done it. Wait, I'm gonna go get my candy. Hold on. And some water. Gotta stay hydrated, right? I've been eating these, uh... Can't you build a docker container from a mixer? I think you can. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, but this, this this is fine, right? This is just when we add a library. It's going to be quicker. Hold on. I have so much candy. Oh, it's good. I never, I almost never eat candy. But when I do, oh look, completed. Sedlib. Yes. Yeah. So. Jaro, so this will be fine, right? So it's gonna cache this thing, right? And, you know, I, I use Nyx a bit. I'm running Nyx sauce. And I do use like shell.nix sometimes. But uh, I want to make this app as small as possible. So I want to be running like Alpine. I also I also want to make sure that the you know the you know I want to be using the Alpine distro, right? Because that's the container that's going to go up on AWS, and then we need to figure out all these you know APK add side lib day right and I'd rather have that issue now than later when we're like I don't want to be I don't want to be mulling around with AWS logs I mean I think that they've gotten a lot better with the cloud logs thing but it used to it used to be painful I remember when you know debugging AWS like just Debugging distributed systems is hard, right? So that's why I just want to—I just want to have Docker container that has a relatively simple Docker file. That's just what it's. I mean, now we're trying to build a library, right? I'll probably like publish the Docker file too because I think it's useful. Because you know, it, it, defining a library for the Lambda Runtime API, right? It's not just about the library, right? It's also like, how do you run it in Lambda? Like, that, that's what I would assume. That's what I would want from a, from a library that does that. Right? So that's what we're trying to figure out. So if you're just joining us, we're, uh, we're adding a library. We're adding a dependency. We're waiting for it to build. And if you wonder what uh, how real development works, well, it's just like this. You uh, you try some things, and uh, when code is compiling, you can just chill, eat some candy.
You're not a real Dave. You don't get to wait around while code is compiling? <laughs> you know, those compilers, you know, some people make like compilers. I think there's like a language called J or something. And And the compiler authors, they're so proud. They're so... They're like... Compilation only takes... Like, five nanoseconds. Or something. It's stupid fast compiler. And I'm like, you know... When am I supposed to eat candy? If it's already compiled in six seconds. You know, it's too fast. Haskell hour. <laughs> Plenty of time to eat candy. Also, remember to stay hydrated. So, see here. Starting Addo Parsec. Installing Mega Parsec. This is what I had split. Split a... When the daily build takes more than a day. Yeah. If it takes more than a day to build a daily build, you can't do it daily, right? Because then you're working with a more than a day old build. It's not good. Oh, okay. You should um, cache stuff. You know, cache it better. I, I, you know, I, I don't. I'm not against the. Like, let's have a build that starts from scratch and always works. But, um... Uh, you should cash, right? Caching is good. Ah, uh, that's good. But yeah, you gotta have patience for the waiting around. God damn, you know, this is taking so long. I mean, because it's like, it's running in a container on a virtual machine. There's a lot of, lot of layers there. Um, but it's running so long that probably next time I try to build it, I'll be like, hey, Reuse some state. Oh, that's good. Long compilation. I mean, this is like a this is this has been going on for what like a couple of minutes now, right? We've been compiling for two, three, four minutes, like five minutes, you know. But yeah, if I if I was doing this for real, for real, you know, I would I would start compiling. I would get up, I would go get some coffee. You know, network a bit. Like, hey, fellow co-worker, what are you working on? How's your day going? You know, talk to the people. But yeah, that's the thing about working from home. Is, you know, you can't talk to your co-workers while your code is complaining. Like, no one's gonna be like, like, hey, let's jump onto a Zoom call because I'm waiting for my code to compile. That's too much, you know? Way too much, at least for me. I don't know, does anyone do that? Let me see. Mm. It's gonna be good. See, so this is my keyboard cam. You can't see, you can like barely see the edge of it. Right here, see? Keyboard cam. But it has this built-in feature where it detects the orientation. So you can like record portrait mode for some reason. It's called a Logitech Stream Cam. Uh, it's a useless feature. It's absolutely, like I, I've never, I've never wanted it to detect the orientation. You know? 
I just want to set the orientation. Like, and you can't, you, there's no switch in the firmware to be like, hey, block the orientation, don't switch. Like, I would, it would be fine with being like, hey, the button that makes it switch, right? Let's look at this, see if the taxi or change. So if I slam my desk, <laughs> you can see my keyboard jumping because it's changing the orientation. It's annoying. Okay. I hope that we don't need some TLS library also. I wish there was a, uh, yeah, like, a, what was it, Char Charoptical. Chiroptical uh, said, you know, because, you know, the Sedlib package it requires Sedlib. I wish, I wish you could just say, hey, here's all the libraries my library requires, right? Instead of being like, hey, let's build it and then wait for it to fail. And then, yeah, I don't know. Remember to stay hydrated. Hmm. I've heard of Nix. I'm using Nixos. Okay. I know it works. <laughs> but uh, like I said, I, I'm trying to keep this simple, you know. God damn it. Chat Optical knows me. He knows how to get me. Nah. It's okay. Now we've been combining for like 10 minutes. That is, this is, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm hitting my limit here. 10 minutes is too long. Cause like now I would already have my copy. I would be getting back and it would still be running. But you know, there's no, there's no progress indicator, right? So I can't be like, oh, it's only got 10% left. It's pretty good. No, I, I just had to say, okay, HTTP client TLS. I mean, we're getting pretty close to something that's rec, right? You know, probably building some high level library at the end, right? But it makes you wonder what's happening. Cause like, I think we saw lens here. So that's how you know it's gonna be a long build in Haskell, right? That's the joke. So, you know, if you went, when you see pro functors scroll by, <laughs> controvert that's when you know it's gonna be. That's, that's, that's how you know it's gonna be a long build, you know? God damn it, like, uh, because pro functors, it used to usually indicate it, you know, so here we have index travel. It used to indicate like, okay, we're gonna be compiling lens, bro. That's what's gonna happen next. And I'm like, damn. Transformers, time combat, set lip completed. What's up? Memory, uh, there was a bug in memory once. Oh, bug in memory. Uh, we couldn't compile it to LLVM. I remember I was, it was me and uh, Moritz Anger Man. We were doing, I was trying to compile GHC. Well, no, I was trying to use GHC on my Raspberry Pi. And uh, there was some, some stuff in memory where, like, memory defines a function, like a foreign FFI function, right? And uh, byte string, classic library, also defines that function. But one of them, like, ignored the return parameter. Which was okay, because it was essentially just like, it was the same pointer as you gave to the function. And like, you don't need that. Uh, yeah, and then, uh, and then uh, we... Yeah, but like, you know, LLVM was like, no, you, you type checks it, right? It was like, oh, see, we're starting to build rec. Uh, it, LLVM tries to type check it. And says, hey, you're using the same function twice, but with a different number of parameters, right? Which is a... Which is fair. Yeah, it's good. It was, they shouldn't have been doing that, right? But uh, we didn't manage to change anyone's mind. Okay. We made it. It's cached. 
We built the dependencies. It's gonna be good. Okay. No more candy, right? Okay, so it worked. Now let's run it. And it prints out. Okay, but we, we removed everything else. Because we changed the library. Entire library called memory. Yeah. We just need one memory. One library, you know? It's not, not so much you can do with memory, right? Write it. You can read it. Relocated, I don't know. I don't know what that library really does. Okay. Uh, so what do we do? Yeah, okay, so we looked up the environment variable. For the API. We're gonna be doing that again. Like that, that seems... Seems legit. Now, uh, let's write the function here. And uh, so this is the API path. Now, get request. It's gonna I know, something. I don't know yet. Uh, get re. Uh, no, let's let's name it next location. So to do the next invocation, we take the API and we do. This is how we do, yeah, chilling late pack chip. This is how we do it like that. This is how we do. There's no copyright on me singing things, I hope. That would be bad. Wait, let me, let me see, wreck. Yes. Okay, so we do. Import network dot wreck. Oh no. It's working. It's working. Okay. Uh, examples. Right. So we're gonna do a get. Uh, okay. So it's gonna be do. Uh, let's craft the request. Right. Uh, rack get. And then. Uh, and it's fine. Okay. 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 I think yeah. So it's gonna be. Let's see. R. Okay. Rec. Get. Um. I'm. I'm gonna guess that is just. HTTP. And then it's gonna be the. Uh, it's gonna be API and then the uh, API path no API and then API path yeah uh, I think we might have to do overloaded strings as well Let's go. Um, and then this should be import. Did it up by stream dot char as be. Let's do it. Oh my god. I hope, I hope we're not using like hidden packages now. That would be so suck. We don't need that all over, okay? We're in a memory managed language, you know? We don't actually need all that good stuff. That's all that's all managed by GAT. I'm eating these. You see? 
They have seven vitamins. Oh, I'm mirrored. But, uh, it's got seven vitamins. It's a lot of vitamins. Oh, yeah, and over at. Are you still in Sweden? Well, no, I'm in Iceland right now. I moved my setup from Iceland to Iceland. Because, uh,. Wow, oh, came for Christmas. Been nice. And everything's closing up in Sweden right now, so you know. It's uh It's not too bad to stay here actually. Um I have no idea if this will work. Yeah, I was invited to like a wedding. It's gonna be 20 people, something like that. And then uh, that was illegal. So now it's eight people. So I was just like uninvited <laughs> to a wedding. Which is, uh, you know, that's the current situation. But that's how it is. Uh, I think we have to do run, wreck. Here a default HTTP config. It's gonna be good. Dollar. Uh, okay, and now this is API. Uh, no wait, this is HTTP and then API and then this is gonna be the oh jeez. Um, this is gonna be API path. So here we have to actually do p.pack. We have to, you know, pack the, because this gets a string. And then, so yeah, let's finish the function here. No rec body, BS response, mempty. Okay, seems good. Uh, no rec body BS response MMD. Uh, heart. Which way does pack go in again? Okay, pack goes from yeah. Okay, so and then we just need to do. We get the request and then we do uh, b dot uh, b dot unpack r uh, r yeah okay so response body okay so this is gonna be a, a res and this is gonna be b dot unpack a response body race this should be okay i think this will be good uh, and now here next invocation api print r I've never been like uninvited to a party. You know, I've like I've like been invited to a party and not gone, but I've never been like, hey, we have fewer people allowed legally now, so you're just not invited. I think that was pretty hilarious, actually. But uh, that's that's how it is. Uh, let's see. It's complaining. What you complaining about? Some syntax stuff. I don't like it. Uh, no, damn it. Yeah, this is what I feared. Okay. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do here... Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, enjoy. This is gonna be a mess, right? So now we've figured out the doctor stuff. Let's, uh, let's write a Nick shell. Let me actually just copy it from somewhere else. Rip plugin. Uh, no. I have something called GT synth. And there I have shell.nix. Let me just copy it here. And we are using 8.8. .8. Um, 8.8.3. And now uh, let's just and run an next shell here. Uh, why am I doing this? Well, this is gonna be too slow. You know, if I'm if I because now what I have to do is that I have to add byte string to be able to do this. You know, to the requirements, which means that it's gonna you know have to build everything again. And that's gonna be too much. Let's see how it goes. Oh, a lot of waiting around today. Especially we're type checking, but when we want to run it, we want to do it like this. But just while we're starting out, let's do it like that. It's like this, it's like that. Um, we build test. Uh, we're just gonna... Oh shit. Now this is gonna be doing this again, but hopefully faster over there uh, Because I have a bunch of the stuff already installed I think And then we can add all our requirements And it should work out Because you know here I have to add Byte string. Uh, byte string zero point ten. What's my biggest accomplishment? No, I guess uh, you know I did a double bachelor's, uh, and I got I graduated in, like in math and and uh, computer science, and I got I got honors, you know, so I got I got a pretty good grade there. I was pretty proud of that, because um, you know I'm I'm like I'm okay at math. I'm not the I'm not the best, so it's pretty. I was pretty happy when I got that. Managed to do that, um, and then I, 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 I managed to get a bunch of code in your GHC. I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, it's really hard. I don't know, and because I'm still doing, still doing my PhD, right? I'm still working on stuff. So, uh, I, I won't have to do that. Gyro, right? I'll, I, now when I have changed it, it will it will just work. 
But yeah, so I'm still playing my PhD, right? I think that's gonna be it's gonna be a couple of missions, man. Do you know? Finish that. But it's it's a hard question, you know. I've been uh, um I just do a lot of things because because I need them. I need them. I need to compile them in Docker. And then I will have to like figure out all the packages, right? And it's gonna be Yeah, I mean Nix is Nix is cool. But have you tried using Docker? Nah, I mean you're you're absolutely right. Uh, but you know, I don't want I don't wanna force like a Nix dependency on the on the uh, library, right? But I should, I should just bite the bullet, right? We'll see. We'll see what happens. We will see. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I like, yeah, I published, I published two papers. So I guess that's an accomplishment. But you know, I don't, I don't feel like I'm, like I've, I've done all around good stuff. But you know, I don't feel, I don't feel like I'm super accomplished, right? I don't, I don't feel like I can, like, point to a bunch of things and be like, this is, these are the lands that I've conquered, you know. I'm uh, I'm still a work in progress, and we'll just see see where it ends up. But you know, publishing papers, doing research. Uh, I I did the typed whole stuff, uh, like the typed whole synthesis stuff in GHC. That was me, and uh, like I've heard, a lot of people use that. Uh, and I feel that's a that's an accomplishment. Do you know? Adding something to the compiler that uh, is like universally liked. I just like, okay. There's a couple of people who don't like it. They just want underscore to be a syntax error, which is like, okay. Sure. But uh, yeah, but that's the thing. Exactly. Like you go for a PhD. And then you're like, wow, I haven't done anything <laughs> compared to these other people. But you know, that's where you get the imposter syndrome from. And... But you know, when you do finish your PhD, like your name changes. Like they add doctor to your name. That's being it's like it's like being knighted. It's literally good like being knighted. Like you become Sir Maddie. Like I become Dr. Maddie. So you know. Uh, and if if your name being changed, like that's gotta be an accomplishment, right? So that's what I'm working on. But you know, whenever that comes up, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna be finished for that for a couple of years. But you know, I think I made a lot of people happy with the type tool synthesis stuff, and uh, and yeah, that's cool. I like it. Uh, but then you know, I think. Uh, but it's like uh, it's not like. But the thing is like that. It's a it's a super practical thing. You know, it's like a useful practical thing. So people like you can't you know you don't go on a date and be like, <laughs> have you used type dolls in Haskell? <laughs> Nobody knows Haskell. Well, a few of the girls I dated do Haskell, but. Uh, no, um, none of them know the type old stuff. So like, yeah, but like that's the thing with an accomplishment, you know? If you do a PhD, like your like actual accomplishment, they become super specific. You know, it's like, hey, you remember that lemma? You know, like Yonetta, right? You had this lemma. Cool lemma. And definitely an accomplishment, but it's like to realize that 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 is an accomplishment. That is 
that is hard you know you have to know a lot and like people are still wrapping their head around the uh, United Islam or like not most people know it by now but well it's in the community but like they're still they're still pumping out results which is like you know hey this is this stuff and, and then we use United Islam and it works out so yeah but yeah i think that's i think that's rough you know it's like when you get more educated you do a phd uh, you just realize that you don't know anything and then you know you're dedicating yourself to doing research and then you're kind of measured by your research but i think you often forget that you know you're you're like i'm learning to do research you know i'm i'm not expected to know how to like some phd programs are just like hey like they expect you to have published a bunch of papers before you join uh so you're like kind of supposed to know how to do research but like i'm still learning how to do research um so i'm setting myself yeah i mean some of these us ones right they're like you're supposed to be a author on a paper in your bachelor's i think that's what i've heard like that's how you get into the those pg programs but maybe that's just a uh, rumor yeah i think it depends on the program for sure god damn this is good content <laughs> me chatting watching compilation output see this is why i think a lot of the programming streams are like hey let's solve admittive code which i did for a while because like real programming is like a lot of it is you know you, you work on the problem and then you sit down and think and then you you compile takes takes time yeah, I, I, I think it's different. I think in computer science, it's like that, you know, because uh, you're not, you don't have to have lab space, right? You can do independent research in some sense, right? But like in chemistry, uh, I think, or at least in like, you know, biology and some physics, like you need a lab to do experiments. So it's very hard to publish a paper before you actually have the resources and then they don't require it but because it yeah so but i don't know this is just something i've heard um uh, but i i don't really know how it works actually if okay we're almost there and then we can go get started on actually you know getting type type errors and seeing what's up this is the thing with like this is why i use the network http library first because i didn't want to spend all time all day compiling uh, but yeah i'm gonna actually Change the docker file and just say here do this can I like just make it and then I'll just like build this and then that's that's gonna be ready for next time let's have this run what year am I in well I'm in Sweden uh, so we do it in four years no, five years actually. I started summer 2018. 
but for uh, uh, due to reasons I had like a conflict with my supervisor and I had to switch supervisors but uh, yeah I had to go and get a master's first so it's, it's a pretty long program actually but then I had some issues with my supervisor uh, but you know was his fault so they extended my contract so I got like a six month extension so I started technically in January 2019 on the books and then uh, and then so so I've, I've done one year now officially PhD yeah I mean I think it's uh, it's very long in Sweden but the thing is like we're getting paid you know more than nurses which is like you know if you're talking about programmer pay that's maybe not great salary but it's definitely like we are above the median wage in Sweden so like or the average wage or median yeah median I think so we're like definitely yeah and we're still doing research and getting a PhD right so so you know it's not yeah so it, we do it for five years but you know it's not like you're living off your savings for five years right you're actually you're actually just doing doing fine you know you can you could live your life while doing your PhD so you know it's not like we're eating instant noodles and 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 you know barely hanging on so it's a bit it's a bit of a different approach to PhD programs and you know would I prefer like, yeah sure I would prefer to be done next summer that would have been cool but you know that would have been a lot of stress and pressure and I'd rather just have enough money to survive on and work for a while and then just try and do good work and not be too focused on like oh no I have to finish in one year I have to start writing my thesis right now I think it makes for better quality PhDs but um, that's just like my opinion dude but you know in the US uh, I think you can do teaching uh, and I think the US uh, at least the ones I've been talking to, they they were getting paid, right? They they weren't they were living decent lives, so no, it wasn't bad. But yeah, so it was it was uh, it was okay. I mean, we have to teach twenty percent. So yeah, that's what. So like last semester, so the semester before that, well. Yeah, so last semester I taught three courses. One in the first half and two in the second half. But now I don't have anything, any teaching until next autumn. So now I'm in my like research phase of the year. Which is good. Fun. We'll see what happens. Ugh, this will be over soon. And then we'll start the docker build and we'll be working on it in the meantime so it's gonna be good it's gonna be good stuff i'm just gonna go my phone for a bit see what's up i put some real really nice uh, pictures up yesterday because we got we got mad aurora here you know that was it was wild let me let me see if I can show you. Uh, uh, Nordelius. Uh, local. Let's open it. it first we had some wild aurora it's green pretty cool and then i had like this nice camera right that i'm using to stream 
and I went out and took some pictures. Well, I took a video, and I was really happy I took a video, because, like, a lot of the time you see these uh, Aurora pictures, but I don't think that kind of captures the, the how, how wild they are, you know, when they're moving. 22 seconds. It's always, it's almost done. So, Chat Optical, what are you... What's your research on? You doing computer science or PO or... Shit. Um, theoretical chemistry. Like, and you, so you don't need to do any... Like, so, so you published papers, like, well, there was no experiments behind them? You can do that? Okay. That's interesting. Mm. Try to rebuild this. Uh, wow. That's not bad. I think this is because what uh, like this. I wanna I would just wanna make sure that it is good. And like what do you do with a degree in um, theoretical chemistry? Like what's the... Uh, like do you work for like the... Uh, like materials companies or like textile companies or... Yeah exactly, like I, I don't want to be a professor either, right? So, oh, okay. That's nice. Nice. I think that's the nice thing about STEM. In that kind of you can just do a PhD instead and then you can just do something else <laughs> you know they don't you don't actually like nobody's gonna complain about the that your degree is not the, the right one I mean it depends on what you're trying to do but you're like I think you know people just respect the degree and I think you know learning to do independent research that's a It's, it gets you far in a lot of fields. Let's see. Haskell Dave. Couldn't uh, IO maybe string with. Oh, yeah, I need to. What? Oh. Oh, my God. Right. So this is going to be, uh, we're going to say from just here. No. Okay, let's do it this way. F map B pack. It's going to work, right? Look at the HTTP combinator here. HTTP. Scheme. Oh, okay, this is going to be a text. God damn it. Uh, okay, so. Okay, then we need to. Oh my 
Now we need text. So we need text here. And what version? Text one two four. Okay. Uh, bigger than equal to one point two and less than one point three. Any snap? So this has to be import qualified text text import qualified data dot byte string jar eight byte string and then here we import qualified data dot text as t and here we can use B here, byte string, and this. Okay, now so this is actually gonna be text, and this is gonna be text. Um, and then this is gonna be t dot back. Now this should work. Oh. Oh. Dollar here. Okay, now it built, but we have to wait for this here to finish before we can actually test it. Okay, so we got the response, which is the body. That's going to be the actual data that we sent. Let's go here with QA and then let's do mix shell here. Cause I want this to be, you know, where we send this. It's gonna be the body itself. Uh let's see. Okay, um now why did we change to rec? Well we wanted to change the timeout. So let's change the default config uh, and see what we can do. Okay, source. Oh yeah, I now showed you the Aurora video. Let me open it up. Pretty nice. Wow. See? And it was like that. The entire... Entire day. You know, it was pretty crazy. Not the entire day, but like, you know, last night. Uh, and then you see, look at this. God damn. It's like purple and stuff. I have lived in Iceland for like I lived in Iceland for like 25 years and I never seen them so intense and this is just like on the beach five minutes from my house right and it's like you know <laughs> god damn and like you know that's why I wanted to take a video because you can't you know you don't, you don't you don't get how they change so much on the pictures you know they it's really like a dance of lights. Uh, and it's pretty hard to capture on film, you know? That's also the problem. But uh, it's pretty good stuff. Anyway. So, you know, when someone says, Hey, there's pretty cool northern lights outside. 
you gotta get out there, you know? You gotta yeah, bring a camera because it's gonna be good stuff. Okay, uh, right, we were looking at here. So, redirect count, coffee body preview, status code, response. Okay, how many microseconds to wait? But it doesn't say... Uh, it doesn't actually say... Um, it doesn't say... Uh, should we just like have it time out and then retry? Or should we just give it like a super big it? Okay, how do we use these option schemes? Okay, so option scheme. Oh, that's what we. That's the last parameter that we pass in. And then we say empty. So here we can say uh, response timeout is going to be max bound. That's a lot of microseconds, right? Now let's build it. Resp Bonds team out. No, we want time out. Uh, what is the maximum integer? That's two to thirty two, right? Oh, three one. Let's just check how much it is. Team get out match. Yeah. Two to the power of 31 microseconds. That is 35 minutes. That's not act that's not that much actually. Like I you know. I thought it was going to be like five days and then... Okay, so we don't want to do it that way. I think we want to say that... Um, that we... Uh, config retry policy. Ah, yeah, okay, wait, control that. Retry policy. Oh. Okay. Conflict retry judge. Okay, by default it retries on timeout. Okay, so I think we should have it retry on timeout. So it's gonna wait, you know, 35 minutes each time and then try again. That's fair, right? Okay, now, okay, we got the response. So we, so we return the response body, but uh, we, we actually want the headers here. 
adjacent response it's always going to be adjacent right so maybe we should do that all right So, okay, so you, you would actually need uh, to define the, the whole thing. Response header. Yeah, okay, so... Uh, invocation headers, so the ones that we want for invocation is... Invocation headers is going to be uh, these things, right? Team get out my. Let's see. So, uh, Lambda runtime. These are going to be the relevant headers. It's probably going to be an X there. Let's we'll, we'll have to test that. Just something called response headers. Let's see. Let's see what happens. good candies mm. let's see how's it going okay we're at axe 509 that's something
So now we're gonna import data that maybe. And we're gonna do a map maybe. Of, uh, invocation headers. So this is going to be actually a header and we're going to say h comma response header res h uh, let a uh, res headers equal map dot from list because so i just want this in like a big map i think it's data dot map Qualify data dot map as map import a data dot map map a map dot from this I think it's gonna be it's gonna be good stuff. Oh my god, we need containers. Oh. God damn it. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I will have to add containers. Oh no, oh. I wasn't building the cabal pile, I was already just building the wreck. Let's see, I think I'll, I'll add my warp here, yep. that later and I just don't want to deal with this whole thing okay Okay, this is not gonna work. So when you just do map and then filter is just s and dot s and d like this. God damn it! Beedy beep beedy beep beedy beep. Why is it complaining here? Exactly not use this style because we already got it wrong. Let's say here. Like this. And 
Yeah, okay. Okay. Now we've gotten the headers. just actually just say here byte string map byte string byte string and then we return the unpack of the body and we return that res headers what we should actually do is probably just like actually send a request so that, you know, uh, whoever uses the library can just directly access everything about the request, but... Oh, yeah, so we've already packed that one. Well, let's go like this. It's just second that's not gonna work so we're gonna have to say okay let's just do it like that it just goes to oh, okay let's map it again and filter but we're actually gonna be Map Am I gonna like this? I didn't like this part Now we're gonna say here data lambda okay, so we're just gonna return this right so this is basically gonna be Body and then headers is going to be a map byte string byte string and now this is going to return the okay this is the next invocation right so now we want to say respond right which is going to be opposed to this path. So we want to say here, okay. Now this is actually going to be uh, print these okay so res headers okay so
invocation response is going to take in a text this is going to be the api it's going to take in the id now invocation response is going to be the reku id and the this is going to be api and reku id and that's going to be run rec default dollar do now invoke so this is going to be res reku post http api uh So this is the path. What's the path here? Okay. Let's see. That's actually... Say here. So, uh... Let's decompose this, okay? So let's say... Version equals 2018.06.01. Okay, and then we're. Oops. Version is text. Okay, so. Invocation path is going to be So here we're not going to get this we're going to say AP so it's API and then it's going to be you know version and then invocation path and then next Okay, and then it's going to be reversion invocation path response. Okay. And it's going to be a post, and what is the post? Well, it's not going to be no rec body, but it's going to be a something, and then BS response. And then mempd, and what is this? Uh, I think we want here a byte string. So no reku body. We're gonna we're gonna have it uh, respond with a byte string, right? Rec, no rec body, rec body, yes, yeah. Rec body, BS, like this? Yes. Risp. So we respond with uh, invocation. Okay, so <sighs> okay. Now loop API. This can take in a byte string. So the R is going to be next notification. Now we're going to print R. Let's just not have it. Uh, let's actually have it in a loop. So do. So it's going to be R. Next invocation API. 
Uh, now this is going to be a li. Okay, and now we're going to use a language record wild cards. So we're going to show here the body. And what we're going to do is that we're going to say, okay, uh, invocation response. And what's the API? API is going to be API. The ID is going to be li headers uh, map dot uh, print li headers now this is going to be a okay let's actually change this a uh, Instead of being a map, it's going to be something else. So we're not going to have the headers here. We are going to like have it actually be in here. So li rec id li. Ally invoked function arn. Uh, Ally trace ID string client Ally client context string Ally cognito identity so ally headers so this is going to be not like this it's going to be Is going to be this okay? So, the uh, AWS request ally request ID is going to be response header. So that's the next one equals Client 
contacts. Okay, we're almost there. Um, and nice. Okay, so we built up this nice object here and we don't need these headers anymore <sighs> okay let's see um, but this is a uh, much better for us to So this is going to be li aws request id and then response this is going to be li body uh, loop api Okay, we're almost there. Okay. Um, We're just gonna force this with a from just uh, loop API T pack text text byte string text. <laughs> In what case, in response, wait, was. In our case response, it's the first one is text and then rec ID. Oh. So much spam on this channel right now. On the chat. Can I uh, do uh, like byte string to text? function for that that I can just use okay decode UTF decode let's just use um,
Okay, we need to actually... Changes actually. Just make it shorter. Now let's run this too. Okay, it's linking. Good. All right, we're almost there. I think we're we're going to be able to send the request. I would respond and then send another request. Let's see. Let's see what works. Um, then we come pretty far today, I think. Right? No, okay. Working test. Oh no. Okay, this was not correct. I think we actually need to do. Right, so it's path. Oh. It should be version uh, So we don't need to say here and let's say
data kinds here. Let's see. We're almost there. Okay, so this one adds that. Um, let's see. This doesn't work because trying to do here okay let's just do it like this let's just say a Two path can take in a text. Um, return UHTTP. Okay, there's going to be HTTP API. Invocation path. Oh, right, then there's going to be version, version, runtime, runtime, in location, Like 
like this. Let's see if this works. All right, if you're just joining us, we are we are almost here. We are writing uh, a Lambda Runtime interface for uh, for Haskell programs, and we're still in the prototype phase, right? We're still trying to figure out just like how do we do it in general, and then we're gonna later write a library so that other people don't have to do this. So, okay, right, so we here we got the wrong Damn, see, okay, this is a large number. Let's see here, uh, Wolfram Alpha. Uh, microseconds. Because I just said max bound, right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so now we've set the timeout, like we're not the... Uh... Captain America! This is the Icelandic flag! Chan... Can I see blue, white? Yeah, I mean, it's almost Captain America, but you know. Anyway, so we, we, we tried to originally set no timeout, but now we have uh, set the timeout to be 300,000 years. So, if this fails, uh, because, you know, you had a timeout, and like your, yeah, I think AWS will not last more than 300,000 years. So, you know, that's just like my opinion that, you know, we will have evolved beyond that. Okay, let's go. Okay, get... Oh, okay, so it's the API. Huh. Path is a... Uh, let's see. HTTP. And then runtime, invocation. Next. Um, start request ID. Okay, vanilla HTTP exception. Uh, get address, address only, address protocol. Host name just, service name just 80. Runtime. Um, can I list? Yeah, yeah okay. Okay, but this API path here, that's the same path, right? Invocation, invocation, runtime, runtime, 2018.0601, next. Green method get. Uh, name does not resolve. Right. Wait. This worked with the uh, get API, right? A simple HTTP thing. What if I say HTTP S? Okay. 
because this worked before with a simple HTTP. Now it's weird that it's not working with the uh, with the actual runtime, right? Let's see. See, what is the environment saying? Get environment. Let's see. Let's see what's happening. There is some mess going on, right? Some a horrible mistake. It's supposed to be HTTPS, so... We need to do this again. Walking on the moon, walking on the moon. It's not that I have to do this, right? HTTP. This is weird. There's something. It's like a. Uh, because it, it used to work before, right? With a simple HTTP. And now it's just not doing it. Oh, there's a knot in my stream. God damn. Give me a second. Walking on the moon. Walking on the moon. 
Okay. Oh shit. Okay, that didn't work. Uh just yeah. Name does not resolve. What does that even mean? Oh Okay, yeah, because it's not supposed to be asking on port 80. It's supposed to be asking on the port provided, right? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is going to be use HTTP URI. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, nice. So, what we need to say, so two in, so we say in path, right? This is not gonna be this, right? It's going to be actually, um, so here we're gonna work, we're gonna work it, right? Just a uh, options opts, and it's gonna be a uh, let. Uh, it's going to be a. Uh, this is gonna be uh, use HTTP URI. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, use HTTP URI. Okay, this is going to be um, use HTTP URI. This is going to be loop URL a base comma it's going to be API comma opts and it's just going to be API and API uh, let's see here invocation response this is not this is actually URL uh, config conf uh, is a URL HTTP opts. Uh, this is going to be options. Option, uh, yeah, okay, there's gonna be option HTTP. So here we're gonna say conf um, This is going to be C base and this is going to be C opts. So here we have C opts. And here we need to say response time on max bound. We're going to say a C opts like this. Now this is going to be con. Be con, and it's gonna be config. Config. Uh, C 
three base three ops um, gonna be just just otherwise it's gonna fail it's gonna be use H Oof, it's gonna be one for him and use HTTP URI period HTTP period and then all of this I've mapped over this and then conf yeah so we loop over the conf okay uh, Okay, this is gonna be config. This is a. And this is gonna be. A. In path. C base. It's gonna be. C base. Here, this actually takes in Let's see, now there's something wrong here. What's going on? La 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 da 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 yeah, okay. It just changes a bit. Okay. Use HDB. Okay. Oh, the big letters. create a URI okay this is not gonna work okay so let's just say here uh, just API is gonna be I'm gonna look up the environment variable and we're gonna map t dot pack oh wait okay that's what we did before right now let's uh, make this a bit shorter okay then we have to get a API URI is going to be MK URI uh, HTTP API Okay, and now this then just con is going to be just a C base uh, C opt is going to be use HTTP URI of API URI and then we're gonna look for the config let's see let's see what happens now make URI this is from modern URI um, import text.uri 
Okay, and now I do add that to the here. Um, modern URI modern equal to 0 0.3 and less than 0 0.4. Build it. Okay, build no. Damn it. Uh over this and this becomes this Let's delete it just see base C alts See if it works. So is everyone following along? Like, uh, you get what I'm doing here? Or should I explain? I think because uh, I, I I get very deep in thought when I when I program, right? So it's a bit it's a bit hard to realize when people don't understand something, right? Especially if you don't speak up. So speak up if you uh, if you're wondering what's happening. Uh, but I think it should work now. Now I think we should... We change the port. Uh, now we should talk to the right port. It should resolve the name. Uh, it should work. Let's see. Uh, so we start it. And uh, we run it. Okay, now 404 page not found. That's something different, right? Okay, so now we're talking to the right. Okay, sweet. So we got the we got the environment. We got the body. Oh yeah. Okay, so and then we got the uh, deadline and uh, everything here. But our invocation is wrong. And why is it wrong? Well. It's because we actually have to say the path. So invocation, AVS request ID response. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, so an invocation is always going to have these headers. All right. Now, okay, so now we have the config. Runtime invocation. So response. So what is rec ID here? That's we said from just right. Yeah. So we already we already know. This would be rec ID. Now let's stop printing the environment because we've made that 
It's gonna work, right? Yeah, nice. I think now we got it. I think we got it now. We, we managed to do the request, we got the result. And it wasn't until we tried to reply because we didn't actually, we didn't do this part, right? We didn't put the request ID in there. So I think this should work. Uh, let's see. It builds. Run it back. Yes! It worked! We sent the request, see? And we got the response. God damn. Why doesn't it print anything though? That's, uh, that's a bit annoying. Let's see. Uh, so here it's so in the loop. It's supposed to print the. It's supposed to print it. Uh, does it only print like on an error? That might be it, right? Okay. Let's just say that instead of the be response being the same as the response, let's just say here. change to success Play this in a nicer way, right? But, um, <laughs> Jesus, what's going on? What's going on? This is just supposed to be success. This should work now. Oh. And I need to tell that this is a byte string. No instance for HTTP body byte string. Oh. Rec body BS. No, oh, so this should be. It's not here where I want to change it, right? It's actually. Uh, yeah, I don't want some of the response here, should be. This should work, yeah. 
All right. Let's throw this over to six. We're not like, you know, we're not, which is we have crazy little space on the other one. So here we can actually do something else. Let's just format it a bit more nicely. So here we just respawn. Hit the post. No special ops or anything. And return. We don't need the map here anymore. Cleaning up a little bit. Clean these up. Sell us with our emeralds there. Okay, let's see. I think this should just work. Uh, build it. We're almost there. I think that's gonna be it for today let's see let's see if we can uh, let's we can we can do like an maybe you should do in the error too you know occasion error that's gonna be the same as here except uh, uh, and the ID and response so it's gonna have here um, MSG MSG type air MSG and then a message type 
Now we are gonna say here data error So this is gonna be invocation error And what does it say? It's error message and then error type. We're gonna enable here derive any class. And then we're going to say here, deriving to JSON. Now let's see if we can actually build that. Uh, we have to import data.json, I think it's called. Uh, yeah, now we need that and add that to the Add that to here. 1.5 and less than 0.6. Uh, compile it again. Nope. Fail it. I think we can just derive to JSON. Derive any class and let's. I think we need to say import. We need to import the GC generic also. And then here at this, we need to say deriving. Let's say just show generic to JSON. We'll print the message too, right? No, this is for generic. Why does derive any class not imply derive generic? Derive gen. That is, I think, because I think you need generic to all these do all these tourism DB. No instance with two JSON byte string. Damn. Okay. Uh, Let's let's then not have it be by strings. Even if we are working with by strings, let's just have it be a string. Because you know when is the error message gonna be too much? Variable options go resp. Because this is gonna be re so this is gonna be a JS response. And then I think it's just gonna be rec JS body, rec body BS, rec body LBS, rec body JSON, rec body JSON, and it's gonna be in a in error error message equals error message. Error type is equal to error. Error type. Yeah, let's let's rename it to error type. Right now it doesn't like this, so I think we need to close this. This is build. Oh, uh, in error. Okay, this should be in error. Okay, it has to say JSON. Uh, location errors is be string string. Oh, 
not, it's not going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, no response, right? Yeah. Same as the other one, actually. Ignore response. So, and we should also do that here. Okay, it compiles. Now let's see. Let's see if we it actually does anything. Uh, I'm gonna actually do it like this. I'm gonna have a deriving way over here. It looks better that way. Okay. Um, Oh, here we ignore response, invocation, or next invocation. Uh, and we have invocation response. So we loop, we, we, we respond, right? Uh, now, let's try. What if we do invocation error? Conf. I think I, I think we can just say the AWS request ID. Yeah, I, I don't think you know I think this sh AWS request ID should just be from just because you know if we don't have the request ID we can't really do anything and it's always like we're always gonna have the request ID. So this is gonna be just text. First message is gonna be error message testing. Period. What was the type? It's gonna be test. It builds. Uh, so let's build it here. Let's see. Let's see if our invocation error works too, right? I think it should just work out of the box, but not completely sure. Um, but um, yeah, and then then we've because um, like yeah, so initialization error like do we have even yeah i guess we want to be able to send that right the invocation error initialization error yes let's uh, let's implement that too because it's just going to be exactly the same as yellow okay let's see um, okay, now it it, uh, it says report. So start and end report. Yeah, I would now I, well, I, it doesn't say. It doesn't actually say. Wait, do we even? Yeah, I don't think we've we. We said response here. This should be error. Let's just have this be in error, and then this is going to be uh, this is going to be error. Uh, Uh, let's make it larpy. No, um, lambda error. Lambda error. Or just lur. This is gonna be a lambda error here. And 
we don't need to do this. We just say here, blur. Blur, and this goes, goes to error. Now for... Initialization error. In initialization, in initialization, in it. Oh my god, I'm just gonna copy it. Initialization. Oh, it was correct in the second time. Okay. Initialization error. So that's going to take in the config and it's not going to take in the rec ID. And it's just going to say, so it's going to be in path C base. In path C base. Uh, no, that's actually going to be invocation error. For, for that, it's going to be a C base. And it's gonna be this guy, and then it's gonna be version uh, init error, right? Run, run, oh, just runtime version runtime like this. Reku ID. This one. I was changing the one. Oops. In the run kind of error, this is going to be C base version one time. There we go. Invocation error. Invocation error applied before argument. Okay, yeah. So invocation error. Uh, this is going to be. Blur. Uh, put it like this. And error type. No need to feel here. I think this should be it. And now we've implemented the next invocation, invocation response. Uh, so we implemented, we implemented you know, next invocation, we implemented invocation response, invocation error, and initialization error. Now, I think what we should do here is that we should also set this X Amazon trace ID with a value of a header. Let's see. Alright, we're almost there. We're, we're so close. Uh, now we want to see the... the invocation error here as a test right and then we want to see so then we're going to change it and we're going to look at the but you see i like the json dump here it's pretty nice okay uh let's let's go building copying we're almost there Okay, runtime interface. Button, button, button. Uh, yeah, okay, let's go. Okay, now I want the error message.
What's that? The error message. I, I, mean, I, I can't tell in this interface. Location error. Okay, let's try the initially so so let conf equals conf. Oh, so instead of doing the loop, let's just say here initialization error. A conf. A lur init error. Okay, it looks like it's working. Now I want to see the initialization error and then, you know, I want to see if I can spot the difference between like a, an invocation and an error. God, like in the runtime interface, right? But it's, uh, it was weird. Pass it to the invocation error path. Uh, okay, ran lamp. Okay. So, oh, we're supposed to set this header runtime function error type. Where's this header documented? Uh, when we report an error. So I guess we need to set this header. Um, um, headers. So header name, header value. Uh, attach a header with a given name content. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Then. So this is gonna be, so for initialization error, so C opts. Uh, header. Let's just say that header. Um, this is not documented, right? But whatever. Option scheme, option HTTP. I'm gonna guess it's option HTTP uh, head, header. <laughs> option, yeah. It's gonna be option. I don't think it actually matters what the option here is. Okay, now, now it should work. I managed to go to linking, so I'm gonna assume it's working. Now, now I wanna see, so this is gonna be, we're gonna run the initialization error, right? That's gonna give us initialization, like error on the initialization, right? But then I wanna change that and I wanna run the invocation error again. 
see if it works. And then, if that works, then we're gonna well, stop for the day. And next time, we will kind of generalize this into a library and then use it as a library and not as a just hard-coded thing. But uh, I think this is useful still to kind of see how do you do it because I've been I worked the whole Docker thing as well, right? Okay, let's see. Now I should start, but this is initial initialization error, right? Yes, nice. Uh, oh no. Test vanilla HTTP exception request headers unhandled. Oh. Um. Mm, maybe. So the 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 error was not. They didn't post the error, but I got a vanilla HTTP exception. No response data received. Yeah, but that's okay. I said ignore response, right? Um, I said ignore response. So, uh, okay. Let's see. But it was trying to say, like, oh, runtime init error. That's incorrect. It's just supposed to say. It's just supposed to go to run runtime init error, yeah. And it posted it to runtime init error. Okay. And it it sent it to the this lambda well yeah lambda runtime function error type. Lambda runtime error function error type unhandled. Posted it. Um, let's see. Runtime accident with error access is one. Okay. Error message straight from init error to retry failed front on straight decision is not allowed. Okay. Okay, I, so I think I think we're actually go package. Reply stream not available. Maybe I actually need yes response here, and I, I'll let's see. Because it seems to be panicking. when it's like it's not gonna send us anything right as a response i don't think so i'm still panicking for some reason let's see what happens it's all gonna work out okay Oops, sorry do the the invocation error let's just let's just run it right away let's just make it do the invocation error in the response
and let's just see what happens there. Because I, I feel like you know the the runtime interface thing should like exit, but it like doesn't. Like if it, if it, so, I, I feel like it should. You know, when I post to this a runtime init error, it should exit, right? And I think it's a bit bit dumb actually that it doesn't do that and then I like reply to error and then it just says okay it doesn't even tell me that hey you replied to error you didn't reply to invocation uh, it's weird but see I got, and I got the response here yeah okay Start it. Okay, and here I get the error. Posted to the error, but it's just... Um, so I kind of get the result. Every time here. But you know, I wish I wish I got more info. I wish I got like in the emulator. I wish it told me, hey, um, you know, it was the re result was an error, it wasn't uh, an actual response, right? It, uh, That would be nice. Um, it uses three gigabyte ma max memory used. That's quite a lot, right? Let's see. Um, custom runtime. Um, Look at the specification. I want to see what, what, what's legal and what's not legal here. This I don't like about code is like that it will uh, like if you were connected to an instance it's like really hard for it to like start without trying to connect to that instance again okay uh, runtime init error parameters header lambda runtime function error type Because body response is 202, forbidden 500. Uh, okay, invocation next. Trace ID, cognito identity, metal MS, function arm. Yes, okay, content. Jason, yeah, yeah. Persecute response, error. I also need to handle this here. Okay, there's nothing more. There's no nothing more we we that we've implemented. Yeah, yeah. We could like say um, we could um, 
pull it out. I think we're okay. I think we're good now. Let's see. Um, let's have a look over that whole thing. So here we have the invocation and we have the ID. We have functions for the, all the errors. Um, and um, this should be ignore response because I don't uh, res because I don't actually care about it. But uh, I I still want to do it like this. I mean I I don't want the body right. But I, I will, like later, we can like do sanity checks by saying, hey, you know, inspect the um, status code and make sure that it's in the specification, right? We have the lambda error here. Okay, let's... Let's just have this all kind of... Uh, side by side and put all of these somewhere kind of up here constants here's the say right next invocation uh, let's move this up also Okay, and so we have the loop here. Um, now, I guess here I want to say like handler. And uh, I want to say that yeah, it takes in, so it's going to say loop comp handler, where the handler is a function from a lambda invocation to IO. And I want to say here, uh, you know, get the invocation uh, loop. And then do, uh, execute handler uh, on the result. And let's just say that it's not an IO like this. It's going to be either. string or it's going to be a lambda yeah so it's going to be a, a kind of an error type like lambda error or byte string okay and then you know res is going to be handler of lie and then a case a res of okay so it was left uh, and then we want to go uh, invocation error con fly aws request id uh, there. if it was right resp then we want to do uh, invocation response con fly aws request id resp and then we want to loop with the config and the handler again okay uh, and then we can kind of say
we can say so uh, so uh, start loop is gonna be was a config here yeah uh, so what are we gonna say here um, Um, data lambda interface handler is this lambda invocation do this entire thing in it it's gonna be I know maybe lambda error that's gonna be interface and then you know we're gonna say data run now this is gonna be and then we're gonna say, gonna say run Lambda interface uh, It's going to be It's going to take in a lambda interface It's gonna return IO Now run lambda interface equals do So we will do a Lambda interface handler Lambda interface init Okay, so this is gonna be Lambda interface uh, Okay, so we're gonna do uh, iRes It's gonna be uh, li init so, And then we're gonna say case li init of Just r Then we're gonna say initialization error okay we're gonna first of all do this right we will you know get the parameters here uh, so and then this is gonna be initialization error conf error right yeah confer okay now if it is nothing or if it's something else like it wasn't an error then we do loop conf li handler Okay, and then our main function is just run lambda interface uh, Lambda interface ha uh, Li handler It's just gonna be Const uh, write as Says And then li init is just gonna be return nothing. We don't need to do any initialization and we don't need to do like this. Oh, okay. And what's the issue here? Yeah, okay. It's the fact that I didn't do come and then like this, and then you know, like this. And now we have some issue somewhere here. Where is it? Oh, uh, I can't find it. Let's see. 
parse error in line 139. Oh, right. Build it. Oh. Uh, what do you mean? Ally handler. For, okay, so. All oh, right, I have to say constant, so I don't care. Return. This is gonna have a very simpler handler here. So this is really pretty. Uh, I res. Let's see. <laughs> uh, okay. Now this links. say I don't really need this loop to be global right uh, yeah ADBS request ID is applied to, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, conf. compiles and we've kind of defined the whole thing right so we need to define the handler right so it takes in the invocation and it returns you know either an error or the response if it was successful and then we kind of abstracted away the um the whole thing right so so initialization error, you know, invocation response, invocation error. All that jazz is now just a piece of cake. Uh, let's have this be called lambda error. Just because we, we want to be, we want to be in the same uh, area as the lambda invocation, right? Invocation error, initialization error, next invocation, lambda interface. Keep it there. Uh, this was like this before, right? Uh, well, how do I format this in a nice way? Uh, I want to have it like this, maybe? Like this. So in it, so either, you know, either we get an error. So, I mean, it would be cool if we had like a monad and we would just say monad fail. But that's not quite there. Um, um, now invocation error, invocation response, initialization error. And then it kind of just starts it up and runs the loop. And all you need to do to use it is to uh, 
all you need to do to use it is you need to define this lambda interface and then we run the lambda interface for you we start it up uh we initialize it if it makes if we manage to initialize then you know we we run the loop otherwise we throw the error okay i like it uh let's see here let's build it and then i think then we're done right We're kind of we kind of have a base you know and then we need to just figure out what we want to export and what we want to import and then write a library that uses it um but yeah not too hard right especially especially thanks to this uh runtime emulator right like you know why why should we like do we want to define a work thing even is it just okay for us to just start the loop and then keep it waiting on timeouts? I think that's... It's not too bad, right? Maybe as a memory leak though. Okay, we compiled it. And the definition we had was just, hey, return success for everything. And it returns a success. Nice. Uh, nice. So it just works. All right, cool. Uh, git commit am rudimentary interface complete. Okay, git push. Good stuff. All right, so yeah, next time we'll uh, turn into a proper library, maybe upload it on a package, all that stuff. But uh, I think we're pretty good so far. So thanks for tuning in, and uh, catch you all next time um, when we do some more library stuff. All right, see y'all. Bye bye.